both of whom are downstairs in uh, past class figures. Um, Sol Hachuel, who is downstairs uh, as a ceramic figure, and in Inyat Nur Khan, and Ibn Sina, as well as 21st century villains like Nestle. <laughs> oh, Monsanto, <laughs> and Nestle, and Nestle, Burke, <laughs> and Exxon. <laughs> so we don't have any yet. Uh, big Pharma, sorry, Big Pharma, Big Oil, and agribusiness giants that stop planet Earth. This is a story about unlearning what we think we know and learning love along the way. So we're going to start. I just realized since this is freezing. So sorry about this. We're using a different computer. We actually have a recording of uh, Martin Luther King Jr., which we, we don't have on this computer. Um, we were approaching the black stone beaches of the island of Rhodes. Many of these Mediterranean islands had been safe havens for Sephardim under the Ottoman Empire. I remembered Mamia's tales of the ancient Colossus of Rhodes, one of the seven wonders of the world. So right there. A giant bronze statue that straddled the entrance to the port of Rhodes, protecting its citizens from invaders. So again, uh, from the book, uh, Kara is, is reading the story, and then I'm uh, reading uh, just a, a, th these amazing facts that help to back up the story. Uh, so it, once you take a look at this book, it's so full, uh, you'll want to kind of revisit it and, and, uh, and learn some of these uh, facts that help to uh, justify where the story goes. In 1883, the Statue of Liberty arrived in New York Harbor. According to the press, it was reminiscent of the Colossus of Rhodes, both massive and powerful, except the Colossus of Rhodes was built like a warrior to intimidate enemy intruders, while the Statue of Liberty was a welcoming female figure, an invitation to those who had struggled to find refuge, find home. Emma Lazarus, a, di a displaced freedom fighter who was a Sephardic young poet of Portuguese descent and a student of environmentalist poet Ralph Waldo Emerson was invited to write about the statue. The message in her poetry was pivotal in the formation of the United States. Highly acclaimed for her writing denouncing the pogroms in Russia and her persistent, persistent activism for Ashkenazi immigrants. Lazarus named the Statue of Liberty the Mother of Exiles and wrote the famous poem, The New Colossus. Give me your fire, your core, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest, toss to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. <laughs> Near the port of Rhodes. <laughs> Near the port of Rhodes, on the back of our humpback whale, we passed the Colossus, and I heard a voice, but saw only a distant shore, but saw only on a distant shore a young girl looking out to sea. Her faraway voice said to me, Zazu, I am your friend, Emma Lazarus. Like you, I fought for others to breathe free. Her black hair turned into a bird and flew away as her body slid into the sea. A shiver moved up my spine. Oh, Zazu, it's crazy that no one knows that Emma Lazarus, a young Sephardic woman, was the poet of the Statue of Liberty's welcoming call to the huddled masses. That's his best friend, Ari. Yep, white culture has erased so much. And let me tell you what happened next. I dreamt my dog, Coco Miso, and I were swimming on the back of our humpback whale across the Caribbean Sea. 
visiting old synagogues and cemeteries on each island while looking for familiar Sephardi family names on tombstones. Names like Perez, Lopez, Carvajal, Abravana, and Rodriguez. Invisible throughout U.S. history, the oldest synagogues and Jewish cemeteries in the Western Hemisphere are facing extinction in the Caribbean. Only five synagogues remain, and almost 